Microsoft rolled out its HoloLens at Mobile World Congress this week. And the story is really initially about hardware, but we all know at the end of the day, it's about software and subscriptions. We're here with Mary Jo Foley, our resident ZNet Microsoft expert to talk about the software implications and what it means for the enterprise. Welcome, Mary Jo. Thanks, Larry. So let's get into the basic hardware stuff, which I know everybody's going to ooh and ah over, sort of. Um, and then we'll get to the real stuff, the real meat of the conversation. So what exactly did Microsoft do at Mobile World Congress? Um, at Mobile World Congress, they announced which we, something we were all expecting, which was HoloLens 2. HoloLens 2 is definitely an improvement over the first generation HoloLens. It has this flippable visor so you can lift it up instead of always being kind of stuck in this weird goggle world. Um, it's got support now for eye tracking. It's got support for something they call articulated hand gestures, which means instead of doing that weird thing with your finger, yeah, the air mouse, you can pick up a hologram and actually move it in space, which is so much more natural and comfortable. Um, so there's going to be a bigger field of view with this new HoloLens. Um, it's going to be much lighter on your head. I don't know if you ever wore one, but the thing is heavy. And after a while, especially if you wear glasses. Yeah, it, it kind of felt like a motorcycle helmet after a while. Even and heavier, you're... I think. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they made a lot of comfort improvements and usability improvements and all that to the hardware. It has a Snapdragon inside, Snapdragon 850, um, AI chip inside. So, it, you know, all, all in all, a big upgrade over HoloLens 1. Did they offer any pricing for this? They that, did. And here we go into our part about what really matters here is software and services, right? right. <laughs> Microsoft doesn't make hardware just to make hardware. They make it to sell software and services. So when they did HoloLens 1, they only sold the headset by itself, basically. I mean, they had a commercial developer set that included some management and security and things like that as part of the bundle, but they didn't sell it with services. That's what's going to be different with HoloLens 2. There's going to be a single HoloLens 2 device, just the standalone headset, that is going to be $3,500. But the way most people, I think, will be interested in buying it is through a subscription. So if you commit to using this application they built called Dynamics 365 Remote Assist, which is, just like its name sounds, a remote, um, a remote assistance application that lets people get information when they're repairing something. You know, say you're doing elevator repair and you need help, this remote assist will give you that assistance while you're wearing the HoloLens. If you agree to take that subscription to Dynamics 365 Remote Assist for three years, you get the hardware and that subscription for $125 per user per month, which is okay. 100 a year. Yeah, so, so I guess what's interesting there is as a company, you got to figure out how many users you actually need for this. Like, right. do you need them on the other line? Do you need, or on the other end, yep. the person in the elevator? I mean, the, the return on investment for this thing, it's basically, say you just buy the hardware and the app. Yep. It's basically like, all right, so I say you just do the hardware up front, you pay 3500 I save on travel, I don't have to send a specialized tech to something. Mm -hmm. you, you get into the black pretty quickly. You do. Um, but with a subscription, you get there even faster, assuming you could do it with like, say, five people or right. six people, whatever it is. Well, they're going to they're gonna offer another subscription bundle if you're somebody who's like, yeah, I'm not sure I want to commit to three-year subscription for this thing. Uh, say I just want to commit to one year and do a proof of concept just to see if this works for my company. They're going to do that as a bundle, remote assist plus the HoloLens 2 for $325 per user per year, which is $3,900 a year. Um, so if you're kind of on the fence and you're like, oh, I don't want to do the three year thing, you could still also go with this 325 per user per month and get the hardware and the app subscription too. And, and this is kind of in keeping with Microsoft's hardware strategy overall, right? Like it's never right. about the Xbox. It's about the Xbox live. Yep. <laughs> so it's never about the surface. It's about the office 365 or dynamics or whatever else you sign up for. Totally. Um, <laughs> So with the HoloLens, do you have to be a Dynamics customer to get this remote assist thing? No. So um, Microsoft's been introducing new Dynamics 365 branded apps for the HoloLens that don't really have anything to do with CRM or ERP. Last year, they introduced this remote assist app. They also introduced an app called Dynamics 365 Layout, um, which is if you want to kind of create virtual layouts while wearing the HoloLens. And at Mobile World Congress, they talked about another one they're building called Dynamics 365 Guides, 
which is 3D training um, application integrated with productivity tools. So these don't okay. have anything to do with CRM or ERP, even though they have the Dynamics 365 brand on them. But it could be a gateway drug into yeah. getting more Dynamics, I guess. It could, uh, yeah. But, but a company could have SAP or Oracle or whatever they have normally, right? As far as I know, they could. Um, I think it's just, this was just a case of branding. And my guess about the branding is because a lot of what Microsoft's doing around AI lately is under the Dynamics 365 umbrella. Um, okay. Even though it's not really CRM and ERP, like if they come out with new bots or assistants, um, you know, some of the app, uh, AI that they've been building into their talent apps and things, it's all under that brand. So um, it feels like that brand is expanding beyond just uh, ER ERP and CRM and going more like into customer service just as a basic overall category. Okay. Um, and the other thing Microsoft always likes to do is connect you into Azure or some cloud service. Are there any HoloLens hooks into that? There are. Um, you know, HoloLens 1, there were some kind of tangential hooks into Azure, but you really didn't need Azure with HoloLens 1. Um, they're trying to make it more interesting for companies to use Azure with HoloLens 2 in conjunction with phones, which is really interesting since Microsoft doesn't have its own phone. Uh, so that one of the new services they announced at Mobile World Congress is called Azure Spatial Anchors. And what this is, is kind of like a shared coordinate system. So right now with HoloLens 1, you can have a guy wearing a HoloLens and a woman wearing a HoloLens and they can see the same holograms together and interact with them together. But now Microsoft's adding this new wrinkle where if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, you're gonna be able to download an app and participate in the same shared coordinate system with somebody wearing a HoloLens. So you can all be like looking at the same hologram using um, like mapping coordinates to see things together. Um, it's going to be really interesting how this blends like the physical and the digital reality. And they're going to make that available really soon in preview to anyone who wants to try it out. And, and what's interesting there and, and also it's a smart move is um, it takes away the HoloLens hardware and takes yep. it out the mix, right? Because at the end of the day, that's kind of what you need to do. Yep. Um, so it's more about Microsoft being on multiple screens. It's about doing the software stuff, not necessarily the hardware. Right, I mean, and if you have a HoloLens in the mix, great, right? It's like, right. they're saying it doesn't have to be everybody in an environment all wearing these expensive HoloLens headsets, right? You can have somebody just on a phone working with those same people. Okay. Yeah, they have another one too. Um, they're calling it Azure Remote Rendering. And this, again, brings iPhone and Android phone into the mix because say you've got someone wearing a HoloLens, you've got somebody with a phone, and you're trying to see some high fidelity holographic resolution, and not everybody's wearing a HoloLens. So the idea there is you can take the compute power that Microsoft has in, in uh, Azure, actually the graphics processing power, and remotely render these holograms in the cloud and then send them back, like stream them back to people with those phones. So everybody's seeing the same high fidelity resolution graphics, even if you're not wearing the HoloLens, even if you have an iPhone or an Android phone. And, and that'll probably become more important as 5G rolls out. Yeah, you would think so. Because then you'll have more throughput to move things around. Um, now, this whole, this whole game with the HoloLens and augmented reality, it really comes down to developers a lot too, right? Because I could totally see AWS doing it's all, it's very similar HoloLens, remote servicing hardware. Google probably tried to do the same thing. Um, so I guess what, what, what are some of the goodies for developers? Yeah, you know, um, Microsoft talks all the time about intelligent cloud, intelligent edge. So they've been thinking about ways to try to get more developers engaged in building these kind of applications that span the cloud and the edge. They've got this thing called Azure Connect Developer Kit. It used to be called Project Connect for Azure. And it's like a package of sensors and array microphones and onboard compute that companies can use to develop custom applications, like custom computer vision and custom speech applications. So you take this Azure Connect Developer Kit, which costs about 400 bucks, you can embed it in a device that you build, and then you're gonna be able to do things like remote monitoring, um, uh, what other kinds of things, like facilities management, all kinds of different applications where you might need computing at the edge, um, but you want all, all of it kind of de delivered to you in a package so you don't have to build it from scratch. 
Okay. They've also they're also doing something. Um, last year they they showed an application where a company called Tremble had built Hololens goggles into a hard hat, so that people on a facility site could use the Hololens for all the different kinds of mechanical and uh, other kinds of engineering tasks that they do without having to take off their hard hat. So they're going to build something that they are, I think they're going to call it the Azure System Developer SKU, where other companies can take that and use it to build HoloLens goggles into various kinds of devices um, and wearables, I assume, that they are building and have that work for their particular vertical market. Okay. Well, I mean, they, all this, the whole entire HoloLens thing, it's really about a vertical play anyway, right? It it's, is. All, it's meant to be industry specific, which is why it's sort of funny. We're like looking at hardware and going, ooh, when really this is, this is typical enterprise software trench warfare. It's about conquering industries. It's about selling subscriptions and selling licenses. Yep. Um, so what would you like to see out of the HoloLens strategy going forward? I mean, this seems like a solid add-on to what they you know, started out with, um, where do you think it needs to go, you know, as, as it moves down the pike? Well, I think, I think it was kind of a, a course correction they did after HoloLens 1 came out, where they, um, you know, at first they were talking about it being, it's for gaming too, and it's for consumers, and this and that. And now they've kind of settled down and said, Windows Mixed Reality headsets are the consumer play. HoloLens is a business device, 99%, right? I mean, maybe there will be some gaming applications or whatever at some point. But I think they're on the right track and making this more of a business device, showing people through examples and developer kits um, how they can actually apply it. And it's not just some pie in the sky, way out there kind of thing. Um, I think these kind of apps they're building, like Remote Assist and the guides, are the right way to go. It's giving developers ideas about the kinds of things they could build for the HoloLens. So I think I think they're on the right path with this now. I feel I felt like they were a little off path at the beginning, but now I think they've kind of course corrected and they're back going the right way with it. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. And um, for more for more on HoloLens deployments and implementations and what to do with this thing, check out Tech Republic and ZDNet. Thank you.